Hello and thank you for joining me again in video 3 of the beginner series. If you have skipped videos 1 and 2, totally fine. We're just building on to our previous sequences, so just adding a little bit more flexibility, building poses. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to get started in child's pose like in our previous sequences. So come up and sit down onto your heels. We're going to just extend our arms out in front of the mat. Place your forehead on the mat. You may open up your hips wider. You will have a wider hip stretch if you do open up your hips wider. You may also bring your hands up to your heels. This is for a more relaxed child's pose. We will breathe here for a few breaths. Inhale and exhale, breathing in your natural breathing pattern. And one more breath. And exhale. We're going to slowly come up into tabletop position. We're going to flow through cat and cow. So place your wrists under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And you're going to inhale on your cows. And you're going to exhale on your cats. So on your cows, you're bringing your belly down towards the mat. Opening up your shoulders, bringing your head up towards the sky. And then on your cats, you're lifting and rounding your back towards the sky, tucking in your tailbone. And again, inhale on your cow. And exhale on your cat. Move through this flow at your own pace. And last time, inhale and exhale and return to tabletop position. We're going to do a thread the needle, so you're going to make sure you're in balance. You're going to bring your right arm up towards the sky, opening up your chest to your right. And you're going to bring it down and in between your arm and your leg, laying down on your shoulder. Your knees are in line with your hip, staying balanced throughout this pose. And slowly come back up into tabletop position, regathering yourself if your alignment was a little bit off. And slowly we're going to repeat the same on the opposite arm. So lift your left arm up towards the sky, opening up your chest. And bring it down in between your arm and your leg for thread the needle. You can adjust your arm that's near your face. And slowly release. You're going to come back up into tabletop position. 
and then we are going to do a toe squat once again stretching out our feet so you are going to tuck your toes and slowly bring your heels down and back sit on your heels feeling this nice stretch in the back of your feet it's a really nice pose and then we're going to again inhale as we open our chest and you're going to clasp your hands together behind you and open up your chest towards the sky for a nice shoulder stretch. Once again, if the pressure is too much on your toes, you may release and bring them down and just sit back on your heels. And one more breath. And release. And then bring your hands back into tabletop position. We're going to come into downward facing dog. So you can keep your toes tucked. If you had untucked them, tuck them back at this time. And you're going to tuck your toes and then lift your hip up towards the sky into downward facing dog. So your hips are the highest point in this pose. And then you're just going to walk out your calves. Make sure your shoulders are broad and open. You can point your hands towards the corner of your mat for an easier for assistance and opening your shoulders more. You can squat here. You can do body waves. Anything that helps you in this yoga sequence. And then from here, we're going to step walk or jump into standing forward fold. So take a nice step if you're walking up next to your hands. And then you're just going to tuck in your core. And you're going to bend forward, reaching for your calves, your ankles, your feet. If this is too much, you can definitely keep a bend in your legs. You can be a little higher. You will get there, just keep practicing. Make sure you're rounding your upper back and keeping your lower back straighter. And then inhale, we're gonna come up into halfway lift. So you're gonna place your hands on your shins and your back will become flat. And exhale as you fold back down towards your legs, making sure your core stays tucked in. And we're going to inhale as we come up to mountain. So bring your hands up by your side and inhale for mountain pose. Bring your hands up together and bring them to your heart center. Feeling that nice wind on your body, releasing any tension that you had making sure your shoulders are away from your ears, and then bring your hands by your sides. And then we're going to inhale as we go back into forward fold. So inhale, bring your hands up towards the sky and bring them through as you forward fold, hinging at your hips, tucking in your core, rounding at your upper back. And then from here, we are going to step back into a lunge. It's just a little bit different this time. So we are going to take, keep our right foot placed near our hand and then we're gonna step back into this nice lunge with our left leg. Your knee is bent at a 90 degree angle for your right leg. So this is a runner's lunge. And then we're going to inhale. You can stay in this pose, to definitely welcome to do so. And uh, we're going to inhale now and to come up into crescent lunge. So inhale as you bring your arms up towards the sky and breathe. Making sure your shoulders are away from your ears. They're not rising up to, to your ears. And slowly we're gonna come up into warrior two. So bring up a little bit, turn your, open up your left leg so you're facing the long side of your mat with your upper body kind of rotating out to the side. Your leg, your 
right leg should not be rotating inward. Make sure it is parallel to the mat straight. If anything, try to rotate it a little bit outward to keep the balance. And then bring your hands up into warrior two. Your knee is bent at a 90 degree angle. And then we're gonna slowly straighten our right leg into triangle. So as you do that, you're hinging forward at your hip and rotating your gaze towards the side into triangle. So you're bringing your right arm down by your foot and bringing your left up towards the sky. So your arms are in one line. If this is too difficult, it, it is not accessible for you yet to reach the mat, you may place a block here by your side. You can hold on to your shin. You can hold on to your ankle. You can fist the floor for wrist to alleviate any wrist pressure that you may have. You will feel an intense stretch here in your side. And from here, we are going to come into pyramid pose. So you're going to adjust your back foot and kind of turn your toes to face towards the sh short side of your mat. And you're going to bring your left arm down to the ground to kind of assist you. So you're in pyramid pose. Your heel is also touching towards the ground. And you're going to kind of forward fold at your leg here. This is a great balancing pose too, it kind of challenges you since your legs are both aligned with your toes facing the short side of the mat. And then slowly start bending your right knee again. We're going to go into runner's lunge and then lower your left knee towards the ground. We're going to go into a half split. So you're going to start to push your hips back away and straighten your right leg. So we're at a half split. And then we're going to stretch out our hamstring. So you can flex and extend your leg. Again, as you're exhaling, you're feeling a nice stretch and deepening it. And then on your inhale, you're kind of rising, like extending out. And then exhale to feel that stretch, deepen it. And then inhale as you go out a little more, stretch out a little more. And then exhale to kind of stretch more, feel that pose. And then slowly, if you were kind of far out, kind of walked out a little bit far, come back up. Free bend your right knee. We're going to come into plank. So you're in runner's lunge again. Come into plank. We're going to go into our chaturanga. So maybe this time you will challenge yourself to come from a chaturanga to upward facing dog. So kind of move a little bit forward on your tippy toes. Bend your elbows at a 90 degree angle and flip your feet into upward dog. So you're, so you're kind of hovering over the mat only your backside of your feet are touching the mat and then flip your toes again into downward facing dog and maybe this time you'll stretch out feel a little bit less pressure in your calves after you stretch one side a little bit more just walk out again maybe do a squat and then we're going to come into standing forward fold again just to kind of redo our little stretches and inhale as you come up into mountain and this time bring your hands down we're going to clasp our hands together behind us and we're going to just kind of do a mini bag bend so slowly open up your chest as you come into a rising locust pose If this is too much for you, 
you can place your hands on your the small of your back and kind of slowly bend back just slowly practicing it a little bit if you are able to clasp your hands together opening up your chest and just slowly gliding down the back of your legs and release so we're going to breathe back in and then we're going to come back and do our routine do our sequence in the opposite side now so you're going to inhale into mountain and you're going to bring your hands to heart center and swan dive as you come back to forward fold remember tucking in your core and rounding up your upper back and then oh, this time you are going to bend your left knee and bring your right leg back into runner's lunge so adjust your distance of your legs as necessary and applicable to you you may stay in this pose or you may inhale and we're going to come up into crescent lunge so inhale Keeping your knee bent at a 90 degree angle, making sure your shoulders are back and away from your ears. And then from here, we are going to come into warrior two. So you're gonna shift your, and open up your right leg to face the long side of your mat. Keeping that knee bent at a 90 degree angle. You're going to extend your arms out into T-pose, making sure your body is facing the long side of your mat, but rotating your knee out so it's not collapsing inward. And if you feel like you can and your knee is not bent enough, just kind of challenge yourself and bend your knee, like feel how it is. If you can kind of get into that knee bent more and more each time as you do this pose. And then from here, we are going to come into triangle. So begin to straighten your left knee and you're going to slowly hinge and bring your left arm by your foot down towards the mat, lifting your arm, right arm up towards the sky, kind of making sure they're in line with one another. And then you're gonna hold here for triangle. Again, you may use a block for assistance if you are not able to reach the mat. You can fist the mat as well. It'll alleviate any wrist pressure that you may have. You will feel an intense stretch down here, kind of coming from your hip. And from triangle pose, we're gonna bring our right arm down to meet our left. And then you're going to kind of, with assistance, shift your foot so your toes both face the short side of the mat. You may need to readjust your stance for this one. So you're in pyramid pose. Both of your legs are straight. And you're going to kind of walk out, do a forward fold at your leg. Feeling this nice stretch in your hamstring. And then slowly begin to bend your left knee. We're gonna come into a half split. So you're gonna bend your knee, kind of coming back into a runner's lunge as we did in the beginning. And then you're gonna lower your right leg knee down to the mat and shift your hips to the back. So you're in half split. And then we are going to do some few stretches here in this pose. Again, exhale as you deepen your stretch and inhale as you kind of walk out with your, le with your arms, expanding out. And you may flex and extend your foot here, however you feel comfortable. They're just targeting a little bit different muscles if you stretch, if you extend or you flex your foot.
Okay, and from here, you're going to tuck your foot again. You're going to come into a runner's lunge here. And you're going to kind of bring up your foot so they're together at the top of your mat. And you're going to inhale as you kind of graze your mat into chair pose. We're just going to hold this for a bit, making sure your shoulders are down and away from your ears. Have that nice squat in your feet and your knees and your legs. Making sure your core is sucked in, you're tight. And straighten and swan dive to forward fold. And start to like make a little squat, squat down on your mat. And then we're gonna come down onto our mat and we're just gonna do a little bit of some stretches. So sit back, whichever way is comfortable for you. I'm going to face this way. And I'm slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, lay down on your mat for a few stretches. So bring your knees to your chest. You're going to rock from side to side. A nice back massage. Feel that nice wind on your skin if you're doing this sequence outdoors. And then Building on from our second video that we did, we're going to come into happy baby. So last time we did have happy baby where we uh, took one leg to our um, armpit. This time we're going to do both. So you're going to open up your hips and grab either the inside or the outside of your soles. And you're going to press both of your knees into your armpit. Feeling that intense stretch in your hips. Once again, if this is too intense, you may release one of your legs and just work on one leg at a time and just build on from there. Just whenever you feel comfortable, you may begin to work both of your legs. But if you are ready for this, just hold and kind of press down your legs into your armpit. You can rock from side to side here. Again, really nice for your back. And slowly release, bringing your knees back up to your chest. You're going to lift and kind of hug your legs, meeting your forehead with your knees. Just hold here for a couple seconds, a couple breaths. And slowly release. We're going to add on, kind of practicing and opening, it's a heart opener pose. It's called bridge. So your knees are in line with your ankles. And you're going to lift you're going to tuck your chin into your chest as you lift your hips up towards the sky for bridge, making sure your shoulders are open and broad. You may clasp your hands behind. This is going to be really intense for your shoulders. Or you can keep them by your sides, tucking your chin to prevent any neck injuries. making sure your ankles are in line and that you're kind of having parallel thighs with one another. And then release. We're gonna do it one more time. So you're going to inhale as you lift. And hold here. Keep your thighs strong so you kind of might feel them collapsing outwards, making sure you're kind of feeling that nice force, making sure they're staying parallel. And exhale. 
exhale as you release and come back down. We're gonna do a supine twist as one of our last stretches. So stretch out your left leg, take your right knee to your chest, and bring it across your body with your left hand, turning your gaze towards your right side as you come into supine twist. Make sure your shoulder is pressed into the mat, it's not lifting, you want to make sure that you're kind of staying in alignment with your body and feeling a nice stretch along your hip area. And then slowly begin to release, bringing your leg back across your body and then extending your leg back to meet your other leg. And we're gonna repeat on our left side, so you're gonna bend your left knee, bring it into your chest with your right hand, you're gonna bring it across your body, directing your gaze to your left this time, keeping your shoulder pressed into the mat, you may feel a little bit more tighter on one side than the other, that is perfectly normal. It could be also, depending on the day, you may feel a little bit tighter one day than the other day. slowly release bring your knee across your body and then bring your right knee into your chest we're just gonna rock from side to side one more time before we come into Shavasana and slowly release walk out on your tippy toes stretch out your whole body into Shavasana. So you may lay again in this pose, releasing any tension that you had. This is your time for any meditation that you wish to pursue. Please do not feel rushed to get up from the mat. Take as long as you need and as long as your practice allows you to do so. Thank you for joining me on the mat again in our video three in the beginner series. I hope to see you back next time with me as we practice and deepen our poses. Namaste.